So I don't know if anybody here has heard of the PA Big Trees program, uh, but practically every state has a champion tree registry. Uh, there is a national registry of big trees, and all this means is that people go and measure trees that have been nominated, and they calculate points based on a number of different criteria that can be measured pretty accurately. And then you come up with a number, and that's your score. And every tree of a, of a given species that has the highest score is, is listed in that registry. And um, back in November, I got in touch with the, the local guy who checks out trees that have been nominated for the PA Big Tree List. Uh, his name is Aaron. And uh, we were on the property for about an hour, and we looked at four different trees. Um, Four different species. I just I just picked the biggest trees of, of uh, this, well, tulip tree, uh, red oak, um, white ash, and white oak. Uh, and we looked at all the biggest ones. And when he measured this red oak, he realized that this was now the official champion for Montgomery County. So there are no other red oaks in Montgomery County that have been measured and recorded that have more points than this one. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, by the way, you guys might not want to stand there because about a quarter of this magnificent tree is stone dead. Um, this, by the way, is why a lot of arborists will wear a hard hat. Although I'll tell you, if I got hit by that, the helmet wouldn't really do much except provide me with uh, an open casket funeral as opposed to a closed casket funeral. Um, but uh, yeah, so. This is a real big, old, overmature red oak. They don't usually get anywhere near this big. I believe it was probably planted around 1903 when this structure was built, and it, it could have been a decent size when they put it in. Back then, they tended to take trees that were like 10 years old from the nursery, and they would hand dig them and schlep them out using draft horses, and a whole team of men and horses would put the tree in the ground. It was a pretty big deal. They weren't just planting little bare root, one, one inch thick, <laughs> shoots they were putting in substantial trees even then um but even if they didn't I, I i'm pretty confident this is about 120 year old red oak um and by the way because trees are modular it can be confusing when you're looking at them to to figure out exactly how big they are some trees are are incredibly large but you don't recognize it until you get right up to it so i would invite people to just walk a little bit more close to the tree because you're not going to believe how big it actually is. Um, does it look any bigger now because I'm next to it? Yeah, so we're going to do the same thing with the D tape. Um, and again, it's, it's price is right rule. Um, the standard height for measuring a tree diameter, it's called DBH, diameter at breast height, which is just arbitrarily assigned at four and a half feet above grade. Uh, but I've noticed because I measure a lot of trees, um, this tree actually flares out already at four and a half feet. So I tend to measure it a bit higher to get a more accurate measurement of how big it actually is. But uh, once again, how many inches wide do you think this tree is? You can just start shouting 56. out numbers if you want. 62. 84, 62. 56. 66. 56. 56. $1. $1. All right, you ready? Yeah. It's 63 inches. Usually I measure a little bit lower and so it is 64 inches, but 63 inches, that is, uh, well, who here is five foot three or shorter? So that means that if God forbid, we did have to cut this tree down and assuming it's not hollow, you would have a surface upon which that you could lie down and your feet would not hang over one end and your head would not hang over the other. That's how large this tree actually is. And it's actively trying to kill me now. Um, you also notice that there's other stuff growing on this tree. Uh, in that first big crotch there, there's a lot of debris that's collected over the years. And so now it looks like we got, it looks like a white mulberry maybe. That's another tree, yeah, a berry, uh, a pit, you know, a bird deposited <gasps> some seeds and it grew. And on the other side, I think we've got, oh yeah, I remember. Last week we figured out that one of the trees growing out of the other side is actually one of the Asian maples that grows over there. And those are airborne seeds. So not only did those seeds have to come this way, but they had to go up to land in that crotch there. Uh, it's not uncommon for other trees to be growing out of trees, especially if there's a cavity or a crotch. Um, and it's also not uncommon to find little baby trees growing between the flares here. There's a, it's very common to find 
small American hollies in this kind of a place. And I, I find a lot of American holly growing right up against the base of a big red oak for some reason. Do they all get along? They all get along famously, yes. Um, you're talking about the space between the flares over here? Yeah. Yeah, well, as a tree grows, it's reacting to the forces exerted upon it by the forces of nature. So it's got to grip itself. The, the way trees actually hold themselves up, they're not propping themselves, uh -huh. they're anchoring themselves. I tell people it's it's not like having a crutch to lean on. It's more like, um, you know, Matt, you can see the Maniunk radio towers off in the distance. Those things are like 300 feet high. Right, so they need and they're entirely held in place by tension. They've got these enormous cables that are very tightly um, installed into the ground. And so it's not moving. That's how trees work, but they, they can't put cables out. And so the strength actually goes down and out through the roots. And so this zone here, the flare, yeah. is crucial for the tree because each place where a flare comes down and disappears into the soil, the root is going out and the tree is being held up by the roots gripping the soil. So if you had a very strong nor'easter come through here, it would want to push the tree that way. The thing that's keeping the tree from falling over are the roots on this side. So it's anchoring. So if you have a big tree and you have to dig a ditch and you cut right through the roots close to the main stem of the tree, that's the critical root zone of the tree, the tree is much more likely to fall over in the other direction because you've removed all those important anchoring roots. Not to mention that even if the tree doesn't fall over, if you sever a whole bunch of roots, you've severed a whole bunch of roots and the tree is going to go into decline. You can't cut roots. It's, it's just not good for the tree. Um, and by the way, if this tree manages to be preserved along with the rest of this land, this is going to be a project. I would happily consult for free on how to deal with this tree. I would first recommend getting rid of all the lawn here and just putting wood chip mulch out because lawn and mature trees do not mix. If you ever go to the Hafford College Arboretum, the Bryn Mawr College Arboretum, the Morris Arboretum, all of their capital trees have huge mulch zones underneath and there's a reason for that. Uh, lawn is not natural. Large trees in this area evolved in the woods. There's a totally different kind of soil community happening in the woods compared to a lawn. There's a lot more fungi in the woods in the soil as, comp as compared to the, the soil under uh, lawns, which rarely have much fungus. Often there's some bacterial activity, but not even that. It's, the, the, lawns are horrible for trees, folks. I don't know if you know that, but now you do. If you love your trees and you're not a real fan of mowing your lawn anyway, you can get free wood chips dumped almost any day of the week uh, from your local tree care company because it's cheaper for them to just dump the chips. They have to pay to, to dispose of them somewhere. So. They'd be happy to just pull up to your property and dump on a tarp and then leave because then they get to go home earlier and they don't have to cough up that fee. So think about it. If you have big trees and you're wondering how to how to do right by them, lawns are bad. Um, and the next thing I would do would be to get rid of all the dead wood. So about a, a quarter would be gone. If, if you look up, this tree divides very neatly in half and then each half further divides in half. And that's why I'm saying a quarter of the tree is dead because this half of this half, that's totally dead. And there's a lot of other dead wood up in the tree too. So um, it's, it's kind of uh, delicate right now. I, we would call this in pre-decline or it's an over mature tree, but no matter where, which way you slice it, it is still alive. And I think it would be something that we could do uh, to prolong its life um, by, by decades possibly if we could just treat it right you know it's, it's put in a lot of time and I think it deserves a little bit more oh and by the way the champion status is determined I, I do the diameter of the tree but they actually measure in inches of circumference and they add a point for each inch of circumference you measure the height of the tree in feet and you get a point for each foot in height and then you get the average spread of the crown and you only get one point for every four feet of spread so for example if this tree is 115 feet high and about 200 inches around. That's already 315 points. And then the average spread is probably about 120. So that only gives it four more points, uh, 40 more points. So um, being a wider tree in terms of your crown isn't as good as just being a little bit taller or a little bit thicker. And the former Red Oak champion for Montgomery County is in Ballakinwood. 
uh, about three blocks from where I grew up um, on a little street called uh, Grassmere. And it's a one block street and this tree is smack in the middle and the, the street really just goes around the tree. So I don't even have to tell you the address. If you find Grassmere Road, you can find that champion tree. And it's not as tall as this one, but it's a little bit thicker, um, but it, it, it lost and it's, it, it had a good run. Um, but uh, I, by the way, I am not confident that this is actually the biggest red oak in Montgomery County. It's the biggest red oak that we've measured. Somewhere in the woods or somebody's backyard somewhere, there's got to be one that's larger. So, uh, well, why don't you guys find it? Um, you can nominate a tree anywhere, anytime. You can just go onto their website and fill out a form and submit it. And, and then Aaron will eventually measure it. And, and if, it, if, it, if it merits addition to the database, then it's on there. We have four trees at Oakwell on the, in the database. This one, but they also have the other ones that are runners up in the other categories, the tulip tree. Uh, the white oak and uh, the white ash.